welcome to Culture here on I-24 News. I'm Odette Grober. Thank you so much for joining me. Today on our show, we'll talk to French composer and conductor Frédéric Chazlan about his upcoming concert in honor of the International Holocaust Remembrance Day. And we'll take a look at a controversial new exhibition at an Israeli college. Frédéric Chazlan is a renowned French composer and conductor. The 26th of January, he will lead the Jerusalem Symphony Orchestra in a performance at the UNESCO headquarters in Paris in honor of the International Holocaust Remembrance Day and the 70th anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz concentration camp. I'm very uh, happy to have him here in the studio to tell us about it. Thanks for coming in, Frédéric. Thank you for inviting me. So this is a very special uh, concert. Well, it's a, I would say it, it's a heavy celebration. It's not uh, something that um, you do every day. Um, uh, it's a special concert. We had to think very carefully about the program. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, it's a very touchy subject, uh, both for the French, uh, internationally, etc. So uh, the choice of the piece that uh, we decided to play, first of all, um, a sweet Yiddish by my good old friend Norbert Glansberg, who would be 110 years old right now, who was a survivor of the Nazi uh, Germany, uh, helped by Richard Strauss to uh, escape and get a passport and go to Hollywood, became the lover of Edith Piaf, wrote many uh, movies for uh, Max O'Fulls and Billy Wilder. Uh, you, you, you can Wonderful. name so many, so many songs that you know that are from Glansberg. And he wrote yeah. this piece that we are performing because it's all the story of the Jewish people from the shtetl to the pogrom to finally hope and uh, life goes on, you know. Right. And then there is a second piece that is um, uh, less uh, light and less hopeful, which is the Babi Yar Symphony by yeah. Shostakovich which is uh, telling about the massacre of the 32,000 Jewish people in one day by uh, not only the, the Nazi but uh, the, the Ukrainian population uh, from which one part of my family is extracted by I mean, survivor probably I don't know yeah. exactly because I lost track of those of those people in my family but Ukrainian yeah. so it's 32,000 people and Shostakovich uh, talks about that in the first movement of his symphony and it's very important because you know the, the, the Soviet uh, uh, regime tried to change the text at this time. They, they, they try to make them change, change the text so that it's not really only the Jewish people who were killed. It's always, as well Russian soldiers. Mm -hmm. It's always, as well you mm -hmm. know, trying to minimize mm -hmm. to minimize the Shoah aspect of uh, of that uh, right. of that. Uh, now there's also going to be a piece, uh, uh, your own piece, Ode, Ode to Peace. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called. Uh, um, let's uh, let's watch a clip, of, a moment from it, and uh, you'll tell us more about it. Good. Tell, tell me a little bit about this piece. How, how, do you, how do you convey the idea of peace musically? Well, first of all, the story is quite uh, interesting. Um, I was asked by um, a producer called André Jaoui, who is mm -hmm. a great producer who produced many movies by Fellini um, and uh, other, other great writers and directors. And he asked me to uh, just to conduct the piece. He said, because Michel Legrand, the famous uh, com composer of Yentel and of so many songs by Barbara Bar Streisand, was supposed to write that piece. And obviously, Michel Legrand gave up, I don't know for what reason, so he, he told me, uh, we have to cancel the project. I said, what moment? Can you give me 24 hours? And I will try to, to write it. Words and, words and music. In 24 uh, hours? Yes. The United Nations gave me one assignment. It's to use the word, we all have the right to peace. Yeah. And then there needed to be a text. And I, I have to tell you that living in Jerusalem since so many years uh, inspired me really to to give some uh, some strong message um, to the world. And for me, it's definitely a message of Jerusalem to the world. It's not the the permanent. Uh, you know, ought to peace that the world wants to tell to Jerusalem is to make peace uh, alone. You know, it's yeah. that everybody has to make peace. So it's really a, a message of Jerusalem. See, we are very goodwill people. And uh, 
if you are if you have goodwill too join us that yeah. will be the message of the order i certainly hope that uh, this uh, message will be heard um let's uh, let's go back a little bit you you served as the uh, assistant conductor to daniel bauenboim in uh, 1989 yeah. mm -hmm. now we we know him very well his uh, um musical achievements as well as his uh, work outside of the musical uh, scene. What have you taken from, from your work with him? I had several maestros and one, uh, one of them was him and he was probably the most important because he has a little bit the same, we have a little bit the same profile, he's a, he's a pianist yeah. uh, at heart first of all and he's a conductor and um, he's, um, he's a man who has uh, an incredible, uh, an incredible culture in general, not only musical, and uh, an incredible consciousness. A lot of musicians uh, stop to think uh, when they leave the concert hall, and yeah. I took from him the really this this idea that what you do in your concert hall, you can continue to project it outside. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I totally follow him on every of his personal political options. I, he's more extreme to, uh, uh, I think it's more confident, as I said, of the goodwill mm -hmm. of the people who would like um, to harm this country. I'm not as confident. I'm a little bit more skeptical, but that's my, my right to think differently. Absolutely. But this said, um, this said uh, is, uh, is done, is done a lot, uh, is done a lot. And I wish really to be able with the Jerusalem Symphony to do as well our share of uh, yeah. you know the, the music is in it's, it's uh, almost a banality to say that music is a, a, an international, international language but it's true but and, it is yeah, and it, it can it can start it can totally have the power to create something for instance we are doing this ode to peace um, yeah. in march at the vatican for the uh, upon invitation of the pope now you as a, as a the the uh, son of, of holocaust survivors i'm sure it, it plays a very significant uh, personally it's it's very significant for you well, yes, um, my, my parents were not uh, Holocaust survivors. They were, um, my father came from a Russian family that is, uh, that is, as, that is lost track. So we we oh, suppose, okay. suppose since, since, since when you cannot find a family, probably you, you, Prob know, you know what it means. Yeah. You know what it means. Now, uh, my mother was uh, actually uh, very well. Um, we, we had a very beautiful uh, event uh, last year because the Prince of Denmark came to uh, celebrate the rescuing of the Jewish community by the Danish people, yep. and my mother was um, hosted after the war by the Danish family, who took part of that event. And by the way, we found my Danish family, my Danish adoptive family, yeah. again by by uh, this by uh, by this concert, by the visit of the Prince of Denmark. So I, I have to say, the Holocaust has been uh, the, the terrible tragedy that we can imagine, but. W it creates, it generates day after day beautiful stories. You know, uh, it's like after after a fire, yeah. beautiful flowers, flowers start to to regrow, etc. And, and the, I, the music uh, is a big part of that. Without exactly. Doubt. Yeah. And I, I think it, it's it's time for us all to as well focus on the on the on the new fruits on the new flowers that are growing on the ashes of the of yeah. the terrible tragedy i'm gonna make a very uh, um abrupt uh, uh change now because i gotta ask you we're almost out of time but there's a personal uh, um connection uh, that i feel to you you're responsible for the uh, uh diva um concert in the fifth element which yeah. for me growing up was one of my all-time <laughs> favorite moments in cinema how did that happen it happened by accident, I would say. I was going to London uh, with the, the, the TV, the, the movie uh, crew, and we were uh, recording the first part, that is a classical part, with the flute, with a classical singer, and coming back to Paris, Besson asked, uh, I, I want to have um, a pop song after that because it's uh, very, uh, it's very heavy. So how do we do that? So we started to work with the, with the singer on building some songs and making some samples, and it's kind of improvisation that grew to a song, but. I would say to my surprise, because I didn't, uh, I didn't expect those improvisation to be built together to to something constructed. Uh, if don't, ask, don't tell me you did that in 24 hours as well. Oh, much less than 24 hours. <laughs> it was during uh, the night after after the recording. Uh, the, we we all came by. It was in '95. We all came by plane, by private plane, because Luc Besson didn't have the time to wait for the next plane. He missed, we missed the Air France regular plane, and he, he didn't have the time to wait. So he uh, he chartered a plane. And in the plane, we discussed about that. We arrived in the studio, yeah. and we finished to eat some pizza with a singer and put her voice in the computer and played with her yeah. voice, and, and uh, here it was. It worked wonderfully. Uh, that's all I can say <laughs> personally. That's what, uh, what I feel. Uh, Frédéric, thank you uh, so much for taking the time. Coming thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure.
In uh, just a moment, we'll hear about the controversy surrounding an exhibition at Sapir College in Israel. But first, our cultural recommendation for the day. Giovanni Battista Moroni was one of the greatest portrait painters of the 16th century in Italy. Renowned for his gift of capturing an almost exact reproduction of his subject, he created portraits that regardless of the existence of modern-day film are still as penetrating and powerful now as they were more than 400 years ago. This is the first comprehensive exhibition of the artist's work in the UK. Moroni's portraits depict the people of the world and time in which he lived from elegant men and women of high society to members of the middle class engaged in their trade. One of the famous works on display is The Tailor, highly praised in its time as it is today. The exhibition celebrates the entire career of the artist who ahead of his time anticipated the realistic style of Caravaggio and later Manet. And now uh, author and cultural commentator Amalia Rosenblum is back in the studio to tell us about the new exhibition at Sapir College that's creating some uh, controversy. Great to have you back, Amalia. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yes, so we're going to talk about the show, and the title of the show is important. It's called The Power of Words. Okay. And uh, it's in Sapir College, which uh, we should mention is uh, in, in the Israel. In southern Israel. Exactly. And it's been... Uh, Getting, you know, whenever there are missiles attacking Israel, Sapir, Sapir yeah, closes every, down, exactly. Everything. And so, so I think that's part of the sense of, you know, the sensitivity uh, of the audience there. Right, right. And uh, uh, what, what do they mean with, by the power of words? Well, um, the show, the show has uh, uh, all sorts of works, but I'm going to concentrate and tell you a little bit about one, uh, which displays three hamsas. You know, the symbol of the hand protecting, uh, in Oriental culture, the house or the shop or you know, or the person against the evil eye. Right. But instead of having, uh, you know, bearing a peaceful message, those hamsas at the show. Um, have uh, very militant anti-Jewish messages such as death to Jews or ISIS, you know, ISIS, the, um, the writing. Right. And, um, yeah, so there is definitely some shock uh, uh, value to this work. Sure, people have found it offensive. And um, the first reactions have come from the right, people saying, you know, we feel offended as Jews. We expect uh, a gallery, you know, a university gallery to, to be sensitive to, you know, the audience and uh, not show anything like that. Yeah, but it could be offensive to, to Muslims as well or to just For about sure. anyone. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you, you would, I think the curators of the show have tried to make the point that, you know, if as long as art is uh, equally offensive to all sides, you yeah. know, that's that's what makes That's it art. Good art. Exactly, <laughs> and not propaganda. And and they do, you know, they, they say the show is trying to raise awareness, you know, with using artistic uh, expression to to convey the conflicts that Israelis are dealing with today and right. have been dealing with, you know, right. more. So, per- and what what about its its artistic value? Does it have any, or is it more of a student try to? It, it's you know. not a student work. It's uh, some, you know, it has work by by very serious prominent artists such as uh, David Tartakover and uh, painter David Reeve, mm-hmm. um, who's certainly a prominent, you know, uh, very painter. Very much so. What what work did he, uh, did uh, he display? One of the more uh, uh, you know, one of the more upsetting works uh, is by uh, by Reeve. Uh, it shows well. It's called right. It's called the power of words, and it uh, he painted an image as well as some words, and the images of people praying at the Western Wall. Right. And um, and the text is uh, the, the I guess te- the controversial part. Exactly. Yeah. It's paraphrasing uh, a phrase from a song called uh, Jerusalem of Gold, and suggesting that it might be you know composed of. Um, other substances. So other stuff, yeah. Yes. Human waste, let's say. We're trying to keep a clean program yeah. here. All right. Thank you, Amalia. Thank you, Oded. Thank you at home for uh, joining us as well. I hope you enjoyed our show. We'll be back tomorrow, but uh, until then, we'll leave you today with a special performance of Billy Joel's Piano Man, given when he received the Library of Congress Gershwin Prize for a popular song. The legendary singer was joined by actor Kevin Spacey and other surprising guests. 
Here it is. Enjoy.